I hope you are getting the hang of that. We will continue to practice finding molar masses as we move on to our counting exercises. Remember how we solved the rice problem? We had 1.94 grams of rice, and we knew that there were 0.21 grams in a dozen grains of rice. So we used that as a conversion factor, and we counted the number of grains of rice. We are going to follow that exact same pattern with the molar mass being our conversion factor. The best way to learn this is to jump right in and solve a problem. So here goes. Let's count the number of moles of atoms in 8.0 grams of magnesium. First of all, think way back to unit one. We start all conversion problems with a question mark. In this case, we will say how many moles equals 8.0 grams of magnesium. Well, now we need a conversion fact. Think about what we know. We know that there are 24.3 grams of magnesium in every mole of magnesium. So that'll be our conversion factor. And working the problem, we start with 8.0 grams of magnesium and we let the units of the conversion factor guide us. So we put 24.3 grams of magnesium on the bottom and one mole of magnesium on the top. Our grams of magnesium cancel. Are we ready to finish it up? Well, look at our question mark and our units. We're looking for moles and that's what we have left. So we've answered the question that we're asking. All we have left to do is multiply 8.0 times 1 and then divide by 24.3. This gives us 0 0.33 moles of magnesium. Now that wasn't too hard. Let's try another one. How many atoms are in 0 0.7 grams of helium. Let's begin with how many atoms are in 0 0.7 grams of helium. The molar mass of helium is 4.0 grams per mole. The units tell us to put the 4.0 grams on bottom and one mole on top. The grams cancel. We can't stop yet because we're looking for atoms. The conversion factor we know between moles and atoms is that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. Again, the units tell us what goes on bottom and what goes on top. The moles cancel, leaving us with atoms. Since that is what we're looking for, we just multiply 0 0.7 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and then divide by 4.0 to get 1.1 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's a lot of atoms. Are you starting to get the hang of this counting thing? I told you it was easy. Your local teacher will put up these problems for your class to figure out. Then we'll try one more variation on this counting thing before we call it quits for the day. Now don't get confused because you are solving for formula units or molecules. Remember that a mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So a mole of potassium oxide is just equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of potassium oxide. And a mole of dinitrogen pentoxide is just equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of dinitrogen pentoxide. Let the units guide you and you will do just fine. I'll see you back in a bit. Local teachers, please pause the tape now to allow your class to solve problem set one. I hope you're getting the hang of it. We just want to try one more thing. Again, I think the way to go is to jump in and try a problem. Here it is. What would be the mass of a sample containing 5.3 times 10 to the 22nd formula units of calcium iodide? Think about it. 
This is really just the same thing in reverse. We'll let the units guide us and it'll be easy. Let's start by writing the formula for calcium iodide. Calcium is in family two, so it has a charge of positive two. Iodine is in family 17, so it has a charge of negative one. Crisscross, and voila. The formula is CaI2. Now, we'll write our problem in question mark format. What mass measured in grams is equal to 5.3 times 10 to the 22nd formula units of calcium iodide? Another abbreviation we use is FU in place of formula units. Well, what do we know about formula units? Well, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in every one mole. The formula units cancel. But we're not done yet since we're looking for grams. We need the relationship between grams and moles. So we need to find the molar mass of calcium iodide. So going back to the formula and looking on the periodic table, calcium has a mass of 40.1 and iodine has a mass of 126.9. So 40.1 plus 2 times 126.9 because of the formula gives us 293 Point nine grams per mole as the molar mass of calcium iodide. So if we're using grams and moles, the units of the problem tell us that one mole goes on the bottom and 293.9 grams goes on top. The moles cancel and we're left with grams on the top. So we're ready to multiply across the top and divide by everything on the bottom. And this gives us an answer of 26 grams of calcium iodide. Just remember, if you let the units guide you, all these problems are really the same. Now, it is time to solve our three problems for the day. We need to find the number of atoms in our sample of copper, the number of formula units in our sample of salt, and the number of molecules in our sample of water. Of course, we can't count them directly since we can't see them, and even if we could see them, there are too many to count. But if we knew the mass of each sample, aha, I think my students will be able to help us with this. The students mass the piece of copper and find its mass is 18.46 grams. They tear an empty massing cup, pour in the salt, and find its mass to be 67.69 grams. Finally, they tear another empty massing cup pour in the water and find its mass to be 44.99 grams. Now, your local teacher is going to pause the tape for you to solve the three problems of the day using the data my students collected. Local teachers, please pause the tape for your students to work problems. I hope you solved our three mystery problems successfully. You're going to do lots more practice before we move on. For now, it is time for your chemistry quiz.
cumulative review question number one takes us back to ionic formula writing. Which the following correctly represents the compound formed from the ions SR2 plus and Se2 minus? A. SRSE B. SR2 SE2 C. SE2 SR2 D. SE SR Cumulative review question number two. The starting substances in a chemical reaction are called the A. Products B. Yield C. Reactants D. Coefficients Number one. In chemistry class, what do we mean when we refer to a mole? A. A fuzzy little creature B. A dozen C. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Number two, the periodic table tells you how many grams are in a mole of atoms of any element. This is known as the A, gram mole, B, molar mass, C, atomic mass unit. You will need a periodic table and a calculator for number three. What is the molar mass of aluminum chloride? A, 62.5 grams per mole. B, 133.5 grams per mole. C, 116.5 grams per mole. Keep out your math tools to solve number four. How many moles of atoms are in 12.0 grams of helium? A, one. B, two. C, three. D, four. And finally, another math one for you. How many molecules of water are in 4.8 moles of water? A, 7.97 times 10 to the negative 24th. B, 2.89 times 10 to the 24th. C, 5.20 times 10 to the 25th. D, 1.61 times 10 to the 23rd. I hope you've had fun counting today. You can impress all of your friends with your newfound knowledge. Right, Mr. Mole? The next time we meet, we will be doing some math that is a bit more complicated. So, be sure to bring your old math hat. Oh. Until then, happy counting. <laughs>